Who at the zoo is back at the Philadelphia Zoo? Mm -hmm. So, it's an annual event, of course, and it's an extravaganza, and it takes place over three ghoulish, fun filled weekends. That's why Steve's out there now. Oh, Roy. I don't remember. All right, well, we are back at the zoo, and this is Shiloh. All the uh, alpacas have great names here. There's Ziggy, and what are the other names? Uh, the there's other? Shiloh, there's Nimbus. So we, have, we have a bunch of alpacas that you can see outside of our Kids UU area. Yeah, so um, these are out, not in cages, so it's kind of cool to see people here today uh, that they can see an animal, and they're like, is that, did he get out of his cage or his thing? But, but you're celebrating Boo at the Zoo, and what is that, by the way, with all the, it's not just Halloween decorations. No, no, Boo at the Zoo is one of our favorite times of year. We're celebrating it for the last three weekends in October, so we have two weekends left. It's a time for guests to come visit the zoo and have the same great zoo experience that they always look forward to with the addition of some incredible Halloween decorations and a bonus trick-or-treating opportunity. I mean, who wants to trick-or-treat? only once right when you could do it more than once and then the animals get a little tricks and treats too right they do yeah this is um, you know here at the Philadelphia Zoo we try to feed our animals locally and seasonally as much as possible so that means this time of year we have a ton of pumpkins and fresh apples and all sorts of produce that you're probably buying at home too and we're getting it for our animals so lots of our animals are getting all sorts of fun uh, seasonally themed treats now an alpaca a lot of people raise them for their it's not fur but they make sweaters out of them. Or wool. Wool. wool and yeah. uh, they, you can f just actually walk an alpaca like you're walking a dog? So they do have to be trained to do this because you can see it's not just a regular collar and a leash and everything. So it, these animals, they had to go through a, a lengthy training process. They had to learn to trust their keepers and kind of go through this multiple times in order to be able to do this exact thing. We also had to make sure that they had the right temperament for it. Not all of our alpacas go out for walks like this because not all of them are comfortable being out in public around people. And we in TV News remember it was alpacas or llamas or whatever. Yeah. They got loose in Phoenix that time and, and there was two of them and they, they became world famous. So they can really run if they get a little loose, right, sometimes, and oh, it's not yeah. easy to catch. Yeah, no, if, if, if he were just out and about without uh, being with his keeper here, he could absolutely go, go off on a tear, and, and it would be a little bit difficult for us to pick him up. But that's why we're not going to uh, give him, him that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, even that would be fun, but I'd be worried to get out because we're right by the it gate. It would really be stressful for yeah, him. He yeah, that's, he, you know, these animals want to be comfortable. They want to feel like they are home. So this is a, this is a great opportunity for him to get this kind of enrichment. This is a, a huge part of the well-being of our animals is giving them these new opportunities, these new sights and smells um, to be able to keep their minds sharp. He's looking at all the visitors. He likes the kids. Is is this something? Is he like kind of small, or they they usually get bigger too, or is this like a full grown, full size one? So this is a full size alpaca. Alpacas are smaller than llamas. Llamas are actually significantly larger, and if you're if you see them side by side, you can see the difference. It's also important to note that he was shorn in the summer, so this is his. He's just now starting to grow his winter coat back, so he's got a lot of room left to get a little bit fuzzier. So if you come back in the spring, you're going to see quite a few inches on his body. Of, of wool. Yeah, and I bet he's wishing he had a couple of more inches today because it's the first day in the 30s today in the morning. All right, well, we're getting the wrap up. So, Boo at the Zoo again this weekend. What time do you guys open? And it's always good to buy ahead of time, right? Yeah, we recommend that you go to PhiladelphiaZoo.org and buy your tickets in advance. We can uh, hit capacity. So, if you have those tickets already, you'll be guaranteed a spot in the zoo. Um, so, you'll want to go to our website, PhiladelphiaZoo.org, and check that out. And the one thing I remember is the oldest zoo in the country or the world? We are the first zoo in America. Yeah, so we are 163 years old this year. All right, well, you're still staying number one like with sports teams. <laughs> All right, thanks, Danny. Thanks, everybody at the zoo for having us today, including Shiloh and, uh, and the Black Squirrel. And the Black Squirrel. Look, there's a Black <laughs> yeah. Squirrel, by the way. A yeah. very unique thing for Philadelphia, Black Squirrel. The one city animal here is the one that gets all the attention from the zookeepers. Oops. He's on our golf cart. Oh, He's coming that. back with us if he stays with us. But they actually feed him peanuts, and that's why Aww. he stays here safely. But a rare thing, I only saw them in Niagara Falls when I worked up there, but a black squirrel in Philadelphia. There's right. a lot, yeah. Steve, actually, right in, like, Haverford. There's a whole, mm -hmm. like, thing on Haverford College's, like, website. They have them. We used to have them in my backyard all the time over mm -hmm. Wynwood, Havertown. In that area, I don't know why. we got some black squirrels. Thank you, Steve.